Welcome to the news today. Good evening. And today, the news was in Israel and the West Bank, yet another day of stabbing attacks targeting Israelis with one 13-year-old in critical condition and including attackers just 13, 16, and 17 years old. Today also saw continued demonstrations and clashes in Ramallah, largely driven by Palestinian youth. And meanwhile, Israeli lawmakers descended on parliament in Jerusalem for the opening of the winter session, with the current escalation, of course, topping the agenda and no shortage of yelling and mutual accusations thrown around, including a walkout on Benjamin Netanyahu. Before we discuss and go live to Jerusalem, here's the latest from Shai Benuri. Another day of terror on the streets of Jerusalem with three separate attacks. In the East Jerusalem Jewish neighborhood of Pisgat Ze'ev, two teens aged 17 and 13 stabbed a Jewish man in his 20s Monday afternoon as he was walking down the road, seriously injuring him. From there, they moved to a nearby street where they saw a 13-year-old Jewish boy riding his bike and proceeded to stab him as well. He is in critical condition. At this point, a local resident began chasing after the two young terrorists, residents of East Jerusalem's Beit Hanina neighborhood. As they attempted to escape, one was shot dead by police who arrived on the scene. The other was also shot and seriously injured. Locals are worried about going on with their daily lives in the current atmosphere. I can't let my son go to school anymore. As far as I'm concerned, the school year ended today. He's not going to school anymore. The rest of the children here aren't going to school either until Nir Barkat, the mayor, or whoever is responsible, makes sure there's security here. A short while earlier, in a nearby Jerusalem neighborhood, a separate attack occurred. Moments ago, outside the police headquarters in uh, Jerusalem, female terrorists stabbed one uh, border policeman. He was injured lightly. Uh, at the moment, the air has been cordoned off. What we have until now is heightened security, and we're continuing to deal with any further attacks. The female attacker in this case was only 16, also a resident of Beit Hanina. She was shot by police and transferred to hospital with moderate injuries. This is not the first attack in the current terror wave to occur right outside National Police Headquarters in Jerusalem. Indeed, this location has seen numerous attacks in the last year alone, perhaps symbolic of the Israeli police's inability to cope with lone wolf attacks perpetrated with a knife or a car. The location of Monday's first attack was the Lion's Gate, one of the entrances to the old city. This place as well has seen several incidents during the current wave. Around 8 a.m. local time, police spotted a man emerging from a nearby Muslim cemetery with his hands in his pockets. The police ordered him to stop and show his hands. He proceeded to stab a policeman in his flak jacket, causing no injury. The Palestinian, a 20-year-old from East Jerusalem, was shot dead by other police on the scene. And joining us now from Jerusalem in Israeli Parliament, where Parliament marked today the opening session, its winter session, is Member of Parliament of the center-left Zionist Union Party, Omer Barlev. Mr. Barlev, good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Good evening. So Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, today uh, at one point said terrorism does not come from frustration over the lack of a diplomatic solution, but rather from a desire to destroy us. Do you agree with that perspective of what's going on right now in Israel and the West Bank? I think uh, both, both are right. Uh, from a desire to destroy us for some people, but the majority, it comes from, uh, for the majority, it comes from frustration. There's no, no question about that. Netanyahu also asked for some support from the opposition for some tougher laws in terms of rock throwing uh, and, and that kind of thing. Is that something that you and the Zionist Union would support? Yes, these, these are things that uh, uh, we are supporting and against. Uh, uh, everything that can be done uh, uh, against terrorism, we are part of that. But what we say above that, that it's not only a question, of a security question, but the frustration on the other side, and frustration as well on the Israeli side, these are uh, part of the reasons that uh, things are happening as we see. Netanyahu's policy failed, and it's a long-term policy, at least for the last six, seven years, that he believes that he will, if he will do nothing, uh, the security issues will be solved. And this is very wrong, especially in the, the Middle East. In the Middle East, if you are not going forward, you are moving backwards. And this is, this is what happens to us, to the, Israeli, to the Israeli citizen security. Our security is lower and lower as time goes by, 
And the reason, the main reason is that Netanyahu does not try to initiate any, uh, or at all, any, anything that would change or at least have the potential to, to change uh, our future over here. And of course, not only our future, the Palestinians' future as well. Mr. Barlev, I do hear your criticism of uh, the Netanyahu government. We heard that also from Zionist Union leader Isaac Herzog earlier today. Still, there has been talk of some sort of emergency unity government. Is that something you can imagine the Zionist Union joining a unity government with Netanyahu's Likud? This is something that I cannot imagine. And, uh, you know, uh, our leader, Mr. Herzog, said it loud and clear today in his speech in the Knesset. He said that he cannot see any reason that the Zionist camp will join the coalition because we believe that the policy, the, the Likud's policy regarding uh, our relationships with our neighbors, as well as in, uh, internal uh, policy regarding social economic uh, issues, uh, our policy is very different and therefore we do not see any reason to join the, the government. We, we, can, we can support the government regarding its combat against terrorism, but as I said earlier, combating terrorism is not only uh, a question of uh, military efforts. It's a much wider right. uh, question, and we must uh, uh, put in front of us and our neighbors uh, a certain potential of changing our future over here. Because things as, as are going in the last, uh, last years, as I said before, our security, the security of Israeli citizens is getting worse from month to month, from day to day. On, uh, on that note, uh, Member of Parliament Omer Barlev, thanks very much for joining us today on a busy day in Jerusalem.